So today we're gonna bring you something a little bit different, a little bit off tangent, let's call it that. I'm super excited because it's something that I've been wanting to do for some time. The team behind the cameras have known this for some time and we've been sort of pushing it aside, trying to find relevance of what we're trying to do. What you see in front of me is a box. And yes, we're gonna have an unboxing. Just to prove it to you, it has not been opened. Stickers are still there, tape are still on. We're gonna do an unboxing. Well, what is it? It's a watch. And for some of you who has been following our channel for some time, maybe through all of the videos that I've done and also the videos we have our guests on and so forth, most of the time we've always had a watch on. Um, to some of you who has a keener eye than others, maybe you would have spotted a few watches you would have known. It is a personal hobby of mine which I've been collecting uh, watches since I was very young. So I recently purchased this online and I thought what better chance than to sort of kick myself a bit and go, you know what, let's just get it done. But we're not just gonna do a watch content for the sake of a watch channel. Um, we're gonna try to tie it in together with the perspective coming from a logistics person. And then we're gonna talk about the intricacies about logistics that surrounds what goes into a watch manufacturer producing that watch and ultimately packaging it, selling it on whichever platform they're selling it at or on. And then to be able to allow consumers such as myself purchase and then receive. So there's logistics. I told you, some of you have listened to me for some time that there is logistics behind everything. So this is what we're going to do. And I think this will be the first episode of many, which is going to fall under our sub channel, aptly named Watch Logistics. Okay, so from the top, as you can see, without even opening this box, there's already logistics at play, right? Because we received it from <laughs> digital. You know what, they've done a great job because I believe I ordered this watch, uh, say called day one, and um, the handling by this particular manufacturer was very prompt. I'm gonna take a few guesses in terms of how they're fulfilling these orders uh, as I get through the unboxing. I think um, day one purchase, I received this watch by day four, and this came from the UK. So that's extremely, extremely fast. And for an online consumer, an avid online consumer, I cannot complain with that. So you can see there's this obviously came through the plane. Four days from UK, it's impossible. It came through um, sea freight, right? This departed from London and, um, and arrived here in Sydney. And looking at just the packaging as well, right? Cardboard box. Now this cardboard box may have been produced in the UK or it may have been produced in China. So if it was produced outside the UK, this box had to be produced in China and then flown over to the UK. So there's already a lot of moving pieces in terms of logistics at play. And of course, let's not even touch on the, the tape, right? The label and the printing machine that prints the label, the ink, right? Just, just looking at the other pack, there's so many moving pieces that logistics had to be playing well with one another for this box just to happen the way it is. For some of you who has this particular brand may already know what this watch is. This is my first purchase of this particular brand because of their recent hype um, with a few very popular models that's had a lot of media attention. This is the invoice. I'll put that there and I'll put this box here. So let's continue on. Ooh, okay. Unboxing experience is not too bad. Okay, so this packaging, I'm pretty confident packaging like these and for, for most watch brands they will be made in Asia probably most likely China and I will say this is probably made in China um, again so all of this had to be designed manufactured flown to the UK for this to happen so they've came to notoriety because of a particular model called the Belkento right and I call it the ding 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 watch so which has the minute repeater you know prior to them making an accessible around the $5,000 range, you will not be able to pick up a minute repeater for anything less than $200,000 or and above, it. yeah, depending on the brand. So kudos to them, and they got a lot of media attention for it. All right, the unboxing continues. It's a 
pretty robust case. I'll be very happy with it. So another little booklet. Thank you from CEO. There's some sort of guarantee card. Yeah, whatever it is. Okay, we'll leave that there. And there's the owner's handbook. Bam, 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 bam. Please tell me, does any of you actually ever read owner's handbook for a watch? Especially those Seiko ones. They're, they're bloody this thick. Okay. Oof. All right, well, I don't know what that is. And voila. The Sealander. The Sealander is their new release. It's the Mulberry dial, and it's in a beautiful 36 mil diameter. I got into wearing small watches, believe it or not, when I acquired my Rolex um, Explorer 36 mil. Um, it was made. It was offered to me by an AD, and I thought I'd take it. And this was during the peak of uh, pandemic. And so I thought, yep, I will take that. And when I first put on that Explorer, it felt a bit of jarring because I was used to 42, 40 mils. And you know, my Panerai, California is 47. You know, now that's too big these days. But when I put it on for the first half an hour in the shop, I was like going, wow, this is small. But after 30 minutes, the watch starts to sing and the size starts to sing. And it was really, and I just got a love for smaller watches now. And so when they released Christopher Ward 36 mil um, with this beautiful mulberry dial, mulberry color, what you call it, is a sort of a maroony purpley finish. Okay, how do we even take this stuff off? A few moments later. I can say in person, guys, if it looked great in terms of the color and the sunburst dial effect online, it looks even better in person. Just depending on the angle, there's purple hues, there is, you know, reminiscent of a, like a beautiful Pinot Noir wine, and then other angles are more purpley than others, and other angles are more maroony than some. Um, you know what, this is my first Christopher Ward. Never owned it, and I must say, just having it in my hands, touching the steel and looking at the finish, it's actually extraordinary, especially given the price point. It's a display case back. I believe this could be a, um, I don't even know what the movement is, guys. I'm not one of those watch geeks I can tell you how, you know, the movement is and the model, but I think this could be a Salida SW200, according to memory, which is a stock standard Swiss made movement. But that's as far as I can tell you about my watch geekness. Then to be frank, I wouldn't, normally know what a balance wheel is to a ferris wheel so yeah wow i must say i'm super impressed with the finishing on this um, the brush still is awesome close end links i'm gonna have to take some links off and then adjust to my wrist but already the size is fantastic you know if for all of you who are watch geeks and loves wearing small watches the 36 mil is just a sweet spot absolute sweet spot there it is, guys. There's the unboxing of the Christopher Ward Sealander C63 36mm Viva Magenta dial. Retail price of $1,370. I believe I had to pay a duty to THL um, for about $250 um, for the GST part and the handling fees and what have you. So ended up costing just bit over $1,500. And I must say for $1,500, anyone who's getting into well-made, well-presented Swiss watch, you can't really go wrong um, with something like this because it's, it's stunning. And if you go onto their website, they've got a lot of other models that have some really striking dials. So if you're one of those folks that loves their bright blues and something where to summer and next to the ocean and stuff, absolutely check them out. I mean, the price point, like, you know, I was a bit skeptical of this particular brand. I mean, it's, look, it's a, is it a micro brand? Maybe it is. And I was like, you know, let's try it on because I've purchased other European uh, micro bands. Um, of similar price ranges, maybe a little bit cheaper, but as soon as you take it out of the box, you can feel that it's not that well made. It feels cheap. This doesn't, this absolutely doesn't. Everything is just done so well.
that's our first unboxing. We managed to squeeze logistics and watch together. I mean, there's quite a few uh, budding watch collectors in TGL, uh, me leading the pack, and I'll try to convince all of my guys and girls getting to watches. So, you know, this is a bit of a guilty pleasure for us, all right? Trying to blend our professional life with our hobbies and trying to make something entertaining for you. If it didn't come across as polished as it should be, it can only get better from here. So welcome to Watch Logistics. I'm La and can't wait to unbox the next one for you guys. Thank you very much.